Can you manifest bad things? And why do bad things happen? Finding perfection in challenges. So is it possible to manifest bad things? And why do bad things happen in the first place? What I'm sharing has the potential to be life-changing for you if you can grasp this. A lot of people don't believe in the power of manifestation and the law of attraction because they have been told that they have manifested all of the bad things that have ever happened to them. And I can totally understand that when people are told that it's their fault that they manifested bad things into their lives, that they are going to become defensive. And I feel the same way too when I hear that. And I don't really agree with this line of thinking. Today, I'm going to explain why I believe bad things happen to us and what it actually means. So what are bad things? Before we talk about whether or not you can manifest bad things, let's actually define what a bad thing is. The words good and bad are simply just opinions and that means something in particular may be seen as bad by one person and good by someone else. So when we are talking about bad things, we are just talking about things that you've given a label to as bad. And I really don't like the terms good and bad and I rarely use them myself. I learned when I was a foster carer and also a teacher that children should never be labelled as good and bad it forms part of their identity and either identity will not serve them well in the future. And it does stand to reason that if you tell, tell a child that they are bad all day long that they will believe it and they will start to act accordingly which is obviously not good for anyone. But a lot of people think that if they tell a child that they are good like good boy or good girl all day long, that they are building up the child's self-esteem and the child will see themselves as good, which can only be a good thing, right? But unfortunately, it doesn't work like this. When a child sees themselves as good, if they do anything that they or someone else considers to be bad, then they are suddenly confused about who they are. They have so much pressure on them to be good that they are not allowed to ever express negative emotions or do anything that other people don't like. So they can become a people pleaser and not know what it is themselves that they have a preference for. And although we have never used the words good and bad to describe our own children, their teachers and other people in their lives have sometimes described them as good and they start using the term at home and then they start calling other boys and girls bad or like referring to other boys and girls as bad when they're talking about them and we had to explain to them that everyone has parts of their personalities that people like and help them to do well in life and everyone also has parts of their personalities that other people don't like and it often gets them in trouble but we are all totally balanced and we can't label somebody as completely bad, all bad or all completely good, we can talk about behaviour and say that somebody wasn't following the teacher's rules, but we can't even say that their behaviour was bad because all teachers and all parents have different rules and what might be bad to one teacher would be good behaviour to another teacher. So it's all just a matter of opinion. So what are bad things? Our own personalities and life itself is made up of things that some people like and things that other people just don't like. It's all just a matter of opinion. And to explain this a bit more, I want to share a Chinese parable with you that really brings me back down to earth every time I hear it. And it goes like this. A farmer and his son had a beloved horse who helped the family earn a living. One day the horse ran away and the neighbours exclaimed, your horse horse ran away, what terrible luck that is, and the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. And a few days later, the horse actually returned home, leading a few other wild horses back to the farm as well. And the neighbours shouted out, your horse has returned and brought several horses home with him, what great luck. And the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not. Later that week, the farmer's son was trying to ride one of the horses and she threw him to the ground, breaking his leg. The neighbours cried, your son broke his leg, what terrible luck. And the farmer replied, maybe so, 
maybe not. And a few weeks later, soldiers from the National Army marched through the town, recruiting all boys for the army. And they didn't take the farmer's son because he had a broken leg. And the neighbours shouted, Your boy is spared! What tremendous luck! To which the farmer replied, Maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. So you can see that circumstances that some people label as good can end up being seen as bad in the future and other circumstances that some people label as bad can often be seen as a good thing in the future. It's all just a matter of perspective on how you see the world and you just don't know the reasons why things are happening in your life. What you think is bad right now can actually be the best thing that ever happened to you. If you get rid of the words good and bad from your vocabulary and just see things as they are, you'll relieve a lot of your own suffering. So can you manifest bad things as well as good things? If you are familiar with the law of attraction, the principle is that you attract whatever you believe. So if you believe you're going to get good things, you attract good things. And if you believe that you will attract bad things, you will attract bad things into your life. And I do agree with this to a certain extent, but I don't think life is as black and white as that. I do agree that generally in life, those types of people who have a much more positive outlook on life tend to get more of the good stuff in their lives. And those people who are always moaning and complaining and blaming other people for everything tends to get more things to moan about. And I've had both sides of my personality experience this in my life. I used to moan and complain about everything and it felt like everything was going wrong for me and now I have a much more positive outlook on life and it feels like I have a very very blessed life at the moment and I think most people would agree with me on this perspective and that's really all the law of attraction is about. It has been described in the same way in all of the major religions so this is nothing new that people aren't aware of. It's just a different way of looking at the same thing. However, fans of the law of attraction take this one step further and start to blame people for all of the terrible things that have ever happened to them in their lives. And they say that they must have attracted them with their negative thoughts. And I don't believe this in most circumstances. And here's why. For the first seven years of our lives, we are living in a theta brainwave state. And in this state, we are very susceptible to what other people are telling us. Basically, we believe everything that we hear and our experiences form our belief systems. Whatever happens to us defines who we are as a person and how we live our lives. Reality and fiction are merged together during this age, so children are not really aware of what is real and what is not real at this time. And I believe that the traumatic things that have happened to us as children are definitely not our fault and are not manifested by us. Children are not really able to shape their own belief systems at such a young age, so they couldn't possibly manifest bad things into their reality. And I also believe that traumatic things that happen to us as adults are also not manifested by us. Yes, we can make very silly mistakes and cause harm to ourselves, but how many times have you made a silly mistake and not caused any harm to yourself? For example, when I was a teenager, I did so many very silly and very, very dangerous things all of the time and got away with almost all of them, probably like 99% of them, I got away with them, meaning that I didn't cause myself or anybody else any injuries or any harm, even though I took a large number of risks that could have resulted in serious harm being caused to me. However, as an adult, I had an, an accident with my juicer and I did myself a very serious finger injury. And this injury had major repercussions in my life and it was very traumatic for me for a very long time. And actually, it still impacts me in a negative way today. And the timing was also the absolute worst because I was very heavily pregnant and just in the middle of a house to a new area. So did I manifest that? And I don't really think that I did. I don't blame myself at all for the accident, even though I did take silly actions that caused my accident, it was still just an accident, I didn't intend for it to happen. And I actually don't think that we control positive or negative events in our lives. I don't think we are as powerful as that. But I do think that we do have power, but it does have a limit on it. 
We can't control absolutely everything that happens to us all of the time, and if we could, life would be so boring. How manifestation actually works. So if we don't control most of the external events in our lives, what is the point of manifestation? What does it actually do? We all have a unique purpose here on earth and we have a set of preferences and things that really excite us and matter to us more than anything else. These are our, our core priorities. And my core priorities are fun with family, creation, wealth, natural beauty and holistic health. Or to put it more into context, I feel extremely fulfilled in my life when I'm spending most of my time creating resources to help entrepreneurs to create wealth while creating wealth myself, keeping my body healthy by eating healthy food, doing exercise and keeping my mind healthy with mindset and manifestation routines, spending time in nature on my own and also with my family and my life feels perfectly balanced if I do these things that are a priority in my life and do them on a regular basis, preferably on a daily basis. And my purpose in life is to give by helping others and also to receive by doing things that I enjoy and having the freedom and resources to be able to do the things that I enjoy. And if I believe in my purpose and by focusing on making it a priority, I therefore manifest the exact life that I want. And if I don't believe in my purpose and I start to think that I don't have time for the things that I love, then I don't manifest the things that I want. As my highest goal and purpose in life is to live my life according to core priorities, as long as I am living my purpose, other circumstances and events that occur in life don't really matter all that much most of the time. I can manifest my dream life by making the main thing the main thing, and I don't believe in manifesting anything else other than what's part of your purpose. Most of us don't mind how we live our purpose. The pathway that we take to get there isn't all that important. It just matters that we are doing it somehow. People get so caught up in manifesting things that really don't matter at all and then saying that manifestation doesn't work. If it's not part of your purpose, then you probably won't be able to manifest it. We can't manifest things that are not part of our purpose and that's because our belief systems are not strong enough. We simply don't want them enough. Most people get so fixated on manifesting things before they've realised what their purpose in life is. And if you don't know what your purpose is yet, you'll not be focused on manifesting the right things. So does that mean that all the negative things that happen in our life are also part of our purpose? Yes, most definitely they are. So that is why we can be grateful for the negative things in our life because they're actually part of our purpose and they help us to recognize how to get on track with our purpose. So if you're trying to manifest something that's not part of your purpose, then it's just not going to happen for you. For example, some people are desperate to manifest a partner, settle down and get married. And say, for example, they've tried everything under the sun to make that happen. They've used every dating app, gone on hundreds of dates, and they've also tried every manifestation technique in the book, but they still haven't found their ideal partner. And they think that they're stuck and they're going through a hard time and they just don't know why this is happening to them. But they've actually never sat down and really looked at what their core priorities are in life. When they do that, they realize that one of their highest priorities is to actually travel the world and go where they want to go when they want to do it. And then they realize that settling down in their hometown and getting married isn't going to fulfill that. And as soon as they start making the main thing the main thing, they meet somebody on their travels who loves to travel the world too. And they realize that if they had found their dream partner in their hometown, they never would have got to travel the world because the person that they would have met in their hometown would not have been traveling the world and it would have been very hard for them to leave their current lifestyle and start traveling even if they wanted to. So things happen for our highest good in divine timing and although you can influence your manifestations, if you are living by your core priorities, you can't control the timings of your manifestations exactly 
especially if you are trying to force something that isn't in your highest good right now. Is manifestation dangerous? A lot of people think that we are so powerful that we could actually manifest something disastrous happening for ourselves or for others. And I do believe that we do have a certain amount of power as humans, but I also believe that we can only really act in accordance to what is for our greater good by living according to our purpose, which is also what's for the world's greater good. Even if we do something that we regret, that really hurts people and act totally out of character, I still believe that however you acted was in your greater good, the other person's greater good or the world's greater good. For every bad thing, good things can always be found and I will explain more about this in a minute. So no, I don't believe that manifestation is dangerous or out of control because we can't act outside of what is part of our purpose. So why do bad things happen? So we have established that there is no such thing as all good or all bad things, but most of us can agree that there are some things in, that happen to people in their lives which feel very hard when you're going through them and nobody would want to have those things happen in their own life. So say for example you have an injury or you are attacked, nobody would ever label that as a good thing. Most people would say it's a hard thing, it's a difficult thing to go through. So why do these hard things happen? And the truth is that there will always be things in life that flow easily and delight us and there will be always things in life that don't go according to our plan, that disappoint us. And if we didn't have things that we perceive to be negative things in our lives, we wouldn't know what the positive things were. We wouldn't appreciate the positive things. A lot of positive things come out of negative things too because we feel proud of ourselves from rising above challenges. In the course of one day, there will always be challenges and everyone would agree that there is no such thing as a life without challenges, even though it appears that some people don't have any and it's just not true. Everybody has challenges. But what about all those really horrible things that happen in life that bring us to our knees? Why do we need those? These big difficult events are very challenging to us and when we are severely challenged, it can actually cause us to have some positive reactions in the future. Another question people might ask is, why do bad things keep on happening over and over again to us, like the same bad things? For example, a business owner might keep on attracting customers who take their services and refuse to pay them. And then the next customer does exactly the same thing and the next one. So why does this happen to some people? And I believe that this is part of your higher self trying to get you to shift your belief system and improve your self-worth. And when you keep on attracting people who treat you badly, it's often holding a mirror up to how you treat and value yourself. And as soon as you start to value yourself more, you'll notice you'll attract clients who value you more as well. Repeated hard things are a message and we can be grateful for them because they are a strong sign sent to show us where we need to grow in order to live out our purpose in life. So how do you feel about challenges? What is currently challenging you at the moment? I didn't always view challenges like this. A few years ago I was so fed up because I felt like nothing was working for me and after a lot of experimentation and some soul searching I finally discovered where I'd been going wrong. Once I learned how my belief system was holding me back and bent my belief system towards what I actually wanted, I was able to feel confident to start a business that I'd been putting off for years and double my existing business revenue on my passive business that had been static for a very long time. And I have shared my system for using your belief system to make more money while doing work that you adore working the number of hours you choose, all without any hustling or striving in my signature course called Dream Business Manifestation. And in this course, I take you on a 30 day journey from manifesting being the person that you want to be to manifesting your dream business and manifesting the money that you desire to make. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com 
forward slash manifest. And I am so excited to share my masterclass with you called Double Your Revenue Masterclass. And if you tried all of the strategies to grow your revenue and it's still not increasing, this free masterclass will help you easily get to the next level. And I am sharing three extremely powerful manifestation techniques to help you manifest your first sale and double your revenue. And this free masterclass is part of my dream business manifestation course. So grab it now free for a limited time only by going to kathkyle.com forward slash double. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.